Grease. You need to grease and you need to do the booms. Again, now I feel horrible that the trucks are all messy, but we had an aggressive shit truck in the week. You are now watching the 2023 season of Farming with Duffy Ag. At some place called Newton Ag Service. If you guys know, other than you know. Safety glasses required. What is this? Hey, Chris, how are you guys today? Alrighty, give us a rundown who you are, where we're at, what you do. Uh, I'm Zach Newton. I'm the owner of Newton Ag Service. Uh, we're out of Georgetown, New York and we spread manure and haul silage for local dairy farms in the 315 area code. How many trucks? We've got 13 manure trucks and 17 silage trucks. And you drag line? We drag hose, yep, we have a drag hose system and we have two noon lagoon crawlers and a tractor spreader. Oh. If you ever watched Andy's Farm and Fixing Fabrication. Correct, we've been on there drag hosing, hauling silage and hauling manure. Well, we figured we'd stop here. He might have something for us. Yeah, I got a couple. We're gonna find out, but have yet to be here. We actually saw you at Coonley Brothers. Yep, I, I wasn't driving as well as I should, and I was very, I was very disappointed in Coonley. We've been, uh, I know I loved Coonley Brothers. It was set up very well. It was set up perfectly. They did an excellent job, but we're so used to going to uh, Canadian truck races and the crowds are like all over you. And I was waving to a tons of people and it was just a different- Different aspect. Different aspect, different atmosphere. We had some transmissions. We got some uh, transmissions from Quebec and they had quite a few issues and I wasn't feeling it that weekend. So, did your family milk cows here originally? Yes, we used to milk cows here. And we sold the cows in uh, two, uh, early February of 2008. And then I got into the scrap business and I was selling a lot of trucks overseas um, when I was in the scrap business and was selling a lot of trucks to local farms for manure hauling. And I decided that, you know, we should get into it. And now I sold off of our other companies. Now you're into it. Yeah. <laughs> Like I said, we've been doing this for 10 years. We're a decade this year. 2013 to 2023, and we're extremely excited to go in 24. And when was this shop put up? This shop was put in in 2014, and our other storage building was put in 2016, and our other building over there, across the area, was done in 2018, and this uh, was started in 2022. And with the lean to our main facility is 21,000 square feet. So it's, it's kind of insane. It's You're a, like a full truck stop now. Yeah, so this is our Jiffy Loop. So uh, my goal is to run 20 trucks a day. And then uh, we service four trucks a night in here. And over five days, every single truck is serviced. I'm sorry that they're all not very well, dirty. You are working, so. Yeah, we're on the front line all the time. We have 20 foot bay here, three 14 foot bays, 26 foot ceilings. So when I have my race truck in here with the 13 foot stacks, we can lift it up all the way and it's not gonna hit the fans. You have portable lifts? Not or yet. that's on the list? That is, uh, that's the Christmas list, or that's, that's the gift to Newton Ag Service after the offices are done. <laughs> The offices are very close. The in-floor heat is very close. Our boiler system. And once that stuff is done, then we're gonna get the new lifts. We're gonna get four of those, uh, I don't know, they're gray with red letter. Yep. I don't know the name. They're, a, they're amazing. A Uni, Yukani, yep. something like that. This truck's super sweet. It was from the military. Uh, a guy from Mac Defense called me up, seen me from truck racing, and heard I was a Mac nut, 
and messaged me on Facebook and he said, I got a good dog here. And it's a uh, super sweet, we bought this. Had 3,000 clicks on the clock in 183 hours. And then we put a shit tank on it and now it's got almost 1,300. It was just a chassis or did you have to take some? No, off? 47 passenger army box on it and there was a turret on the driver's side underneath the step. So we got this quite a few years ago. We got bought this in 2017. So that's a Canadian spread. Yeah, 60 inch spread. It's got a Hendrickson rubber block, a big anti, I'm a Camelback fan. Yeah. Mac rear with CRD uh, 200 and 201s and Hub Pilot, my favorite, but I'm not a rubber block fan. But this was a great truck. We bought it down to CNY auction where you guys were earlier. Yeah. They said it didn't run. And uh, I did some adjustment on the throttle position on the because it's at VMAC 1, first generation. I did some adjustment to that, put a gallon airline antifreeze in it, and now it does. It just does its thing. It does 1,500 hours a year. Maybe six, it skips. He, the, he drives it. One other guy drove it the other day and projectile vomited the cab <laughs> <and> newer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this weekend we were washing some drag hose stuff, so we didn't touch any shit trucks. Yeah. You done drag hosing for the year? No, we've got about 5 million gallons left to do a frack tank work over in Preble. Okay. Yep, this is my favorite. Yep. I love Bulletproof. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this is what all the Haitians love, so that's what I love. If they use it in Haiti, I love it. <laughs> it survives here very, very well. Yeah, it's a Camelback, 44,000 pound rear. It's 11 spring. The bottom three are seven eighths. All the ones above it um, are one inch. It's got uh, new style. These are the CRD 150 and 151s. It's still the six bolt axle shaft, fine spline. And this is 532 gear ratio, my absolute favorite ratio to spread manure. And uh, it's sweet, it just does its thing. MP7, eight low low, no, excuse me, MP8. So if you guys don't know, in Haiti, Haiti there's guys that literally rebuild Max in dirt. in dirt and they still run. So when a when a dog dies in the U.S., it goes to a different country, and yeah. it literally lives a whole nother life. Yeah, but before they go to Haiti, we take all my favorite parts, and I save all the junk parts <laughs> and put on it. So one day they're going to come over and get you because they need all the parts. <laughs> yeah. Well, we send a lot of stuff. All of our older stuff. All right, this truck had a sister, Truck 17. That went to Haiti this year, but it was very sacrificed. Yeah. Um, this is truck 35. This is a CV713. That thing's slick. Mm -hmm. You just walk past a great service box. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, Alex made this. This is uh, his um, Miller body. This is super cool. I love it. It's got a torch tank. It's got everything. Field ready for fixing. Yeah. Uh, this is Camelback again. You know, same as the other one, but this is 464 ratio. Uh, 8 low low, um, 400 horse, E7, it's called, it's actually called an AMI. This, uh, this body was actually off of 23 sister truck, truck 17. We put this together this year, probably this truck so far this year has got 1800 hours on it. This has got the heavy duty housings, so does this for the rears. Uh, 1810 shacks, some of my favorite stuff. You don't need the SPL when you're shit trucking, just race trucking. So no floaters? Uh, fl well, we have, yes. we just got a shipping container load. We buy floaters on the shipping container load. So there's two silage trucks with 62 floaters in that barn. Then there's brand new from Israel, we buy direct. And over there, there's probably, I don't know, about 50 floaters on the ground. Oh, really? You put them on these trucks for uh, spreading, yes. or are these just transferring? Uh, just transfer in the winter, but in the summer, all the shitters have floaters on them. We have 30 sets of flotation tires. Hmm. Now, what's the best flotation tire? Alliance 331. Okay. And... You've got to buy it from Israel so you don't have any bead problems. 
everybody online is always talking about like 50, 55 pounds of air pressure. We run 65 to 70, and we have very we had two blowouts this year. And like during, they were a hot commodity though for the fall. That's every single one of our silage trucks. Seventeen of them all have floaters on. I think there might be 31 or 32 sets because we have one or two sets available extra. Yeah. So we just like to have stuff in stock. Yep. We, get, we run a lot of recaps in the winter. So we run the uh, block style tread and the greater tread. Yep. Whichever, we try to you know recap 20 or 30 at a time. So we have them in, in stock. But these are very, very, very muddy because obviously like the past week, Oh, it hasn't stopped raining. No, and when we're frack tanking and the driveways are all muddy on the dairies. Yep. And we've been transferring to satellite lagoons that are like a mile and a half off the main road. Mm -hmm. You're driving through everything. Correct. And this is kind of cool. This dog is really cool. So we bought six of these. They had cranes on. My personal favorite, this is a really rare item for a Mac. Um, a lot of guys love full locks, and people say that, you know, you need to have full locks to spread manure, but I disagree with that. But these Mac rears are factory full lock, and they didn't come out with that till 2013. And this is a 13, and... Uh, so they had cranes, so you got cranes for sale. Yes, we have us. Uh, well, we'll talk, we'll see them, right? Yeah, we'll see them. They're right outside. This is an Allison Automatic MP7 405 horse. And this is a GU813. We like to have some automatics for guys that are learning, you know, new, that are new to the um, trucking industry and some older gentlemen that like to stay on the front line, but their knees are kind of tired. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's more and more automatics on farms nowadays. Yeah, um, automatic in a shit truck is nice, but we have four of these that are automatic on the silage truck, and they are amazing. Yeah, on auto you're never shifting, you're always at the right pace. Yeah, you know, the chopper guy, when he's pissed, he's ripping around a corner and he just jams the stick forward. And if there's a couple little bit of corn, we don't know any chopper guys that would do that. <laughs> You know, you get blasted yeah. in the window, but with an automatic, you know, you can keep it, right up with them. Yep, you just lay the hammer down, and you know, it you goes. just you just keep on rolling. Um, we've got uh, exhaust brake. Yep, exhaust brake, and it has a Jake brake. It's a uh, MP7, so it's a Volvo motor painted red. It's against my. Uh, Zach's yeah. a Mac Pierce. Yeah, I'm I'm a dog catcher, but I got to get with the times, you know. <laughs> and without Volvo, we wouldn't have Mac today. And five years ago, if you said that to me, I'd probably have a hissy fit. But there. And uh, so we're number nineteen. That's so number two. Yeah, we're number two, and we have nineteen brand new pieces of Diller that we purchased. The only other person is in California, and they got twenty one. And so I've never even seen Diller in California, to be honest. They're they're white tanks with a red stripe, no nurse boom, just a side vomit. It just comes up, goes off to the side, and I don't know what they do with it, but huh? I seen California is a little different. Yeah, I just seen I seen two of them when I picked up the tanks uh, from John Peachy. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and it was like a huge freaking party town. And we just drove to Alabama and we walked in there and everyone's like, roll tide. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so this is truck 32. This is an 07 CV713. Mac 10 speed, 44, 50 inch spread, 464 ratio. AMI 370, 37. AMI 400 Mac, 8 low low, 44 on brass. Um, here's another 07. What's your opinion on the USA Roddy? Uh, I like USA Roddy. Bruce does whatever I want. They do a good job. They're 10 minutes down the road. 
We have uh, side racks off on both sides because we are getting double dump carted mm -hmm. this year, so we pulled them off. Um, this is another 07. That right there is an 86, and I bought that off the original owner that was like 85 years old. And it had a Still six knows. Feet and 55,000 pound rears. So we shit can the 55s. We put 44s in it on brass, 464 ratio, 8 low low. And uh, I turned the 285 up a little bit max, so she runs like a Swiss wash right now, and that thing's just like sweet. It, and oh, that truck only had like, I don't know, 85,000 miles, original miles on it when we bought it. Hell of a good truck. Uh, 44 rears. This is 532 gear ratio also on a 60 inch spread. Uh, there's truck 38, that's another 07, 8 low low. AMI 400, 44 Mac, 464 ratio. Here's some of my collector's items over here. <laughs> here's, a, here's a good takeout 8 low low. I need that. Um, I got one for the white truck. 8 low low is like my favorite transmission. Here's the uh, race truck parts engine. This is how you know we're a Mac dog place. This is an You got a whole trunnion. Trunnion, square, ready to go. So do you consider yourself a hoarder? No, I'm no, way better. No, you're not be there yet? No, I'm way better than what I used to. <laughs> this, All this area used to be filled with junk Macs, and then I stole all the parts. No, but as far as parts. No, because no, 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 no. We used to have like 15 Macs here piled up everywhere and then I cleaned them all out when uh, we did this lean to expansion these are some oh, yeah. left over you weren't lying about the tires we bought oh yeah there's uh, one of the loads of new tires <laughs> um the, we, bu we buy pallets of brake drums there's actually 33 in that truck. there's some cool toolboxes Dealer and color hoses. Um, this is a whole different world. I love it. To think Brad didn't want to come see you. Uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> what a guy. Oh, you uh, got a vending right there. Mm -hmm. A brand new. Oh, my favorite ratio, 464. One of my favorites. Uh, new impeller fans. Here's half of our pallet left over from COVID of um, impeller motors. Oh, this is truck 43. This is the auto truck. There's all of our lights for outdoor and indoor lighting. Um, just some drag hose supplies over yep. here. A few pigs and whatnot. Yep, more uh, pile of spread cans, some of the color housings. And then there's pallets of parts over there. And then there's tons of parts in the silage trucks. <laughs> I this is insane. It. I love it. <laughs> this is where I want to be in like 45 well, years. Yeah, 45 years. I think you're a little ahead on me on this. Yeah, over there is our wash bay for the shitters in the silage trucks. It's our old concrete from when my dad had the cow pasture next to wheat food. My buddy Dan Fuller is going to rip these silos down. Oh, yeah? All three of them are coming down. We're going to take the fence down and put a driveway behind so we can do a circle. There's their product, your Terra Disc. I was wondering what that actually is. Yeah, I really like the Terra Disc. It does a really good job on corn stubble and stuff like that. And you're just panning it in front of it? Yeah, we're panning in front of it. It does great. They came from our brown ink in uh, New Nazareth, uh, Wisconsin. Yep. Alrighty, so never in my life did I expect such a tour from Zach. He is, he's awesome. So, absolutely awesome, but we're going in here. I don't know, for all you cat performance guys, you got your video on? We got 3200 for a cat 70 pin. If you guys want a little pep in your step on your shit trucking in the 315. Well, there you go. And, uh... <laughs> Isaiah's digging through his stuff. If you're looking at, uh, you know, a, um, Acer, you got, uh... 3,000 RPM for an Acer right here in stock. We'll have to put your phone number at the bottom of this for anybody that needs you. No, no, no. Those are <laughs> certain stash. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, E7 Mac ECMs here. These are 460 XT. It's a personal favorite. If anybody knows an E7 XT, they were called the Extra Torque. Yep. They were 1950 foot pounds of torques to go after them cats and scummins. <laughs> uh, you know, here, here, here's you know the pride and that, that's when I first met you ever. Yeah, this back was, in the day. This is when I was still cool. Yep. We were drag competition back. Yep. Then. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a cool trophy that's in here from dragging and pulling the pines when we drove to a friend of mine, Hanky Omens, and I went to Texas. Wow, that was a long drive. So you race your race truck, Michigan? Do you go uh, out Michigan, there? Michigan, Ohio, Texas, Texas, Ohio, and then Canada. Canada and Quebec, uh, Notre Dame de Nord, Diesel Fest, La Dore, Challenge 255, St. Joseph de Beauce. We did them all last year. That was a big job. Insane. <laughs> um, and what's the race truck actually run for a horsepower if you... Uh, ballpark for a probably around I don't know for a B class race truck probably around like fifteen sixteen hundred for a semi semi with an eighty one millimeter turbo there's some really you know I'll let you two see this but we got a, like a really super rare experimental B class turbo right here which literally I just opened today if you guys want to get a look at that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really so that's cool. top secret. Yeah, but we, <laughs> we don't show Don't show anybody that. No. <laughs> you have to mute that. Yeah. <laughs> here's a, a visor for my W900. Kind of cool. Yep. Our computer. Oh, here's some bull hauler stacks. I got to get real Frenchy. I got to get real French like because I got to change the tip. Wow. You know, we get, you know, to be in Quebec, you got to just be. French. You got to look like it. Yeah, you got to be a French. Um, oh, there we go, right there, Mac Road. Yep. You know, we still got uh, you know Caterpillar hats here. Here's some of like this is like a little bit of 2012. Wow. You know, a little bit of 2012 truck pulling. If anybody cares about that yep. still, when I was cool. <laughs> um, so how many times did you beat Brad? Everyone? No, no, I don't. Brad, so one of the, my most memorable moment is when I got a, what was it, a fifth? And you got a fourth? You beat me by like three inches at Fonda? <laughs> We're Canadian friends. Supporting Quebec, where we grew up truck racing. <laughs> Still to this day, it rubs me wrong. He sent me the video. Uh, <laughs> Just to rub it back in? There you go. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Um... So that was whatever. That was back in the oh. day. Yeah. <clears throat> that was fun. What, what was the name of your truck, Brad? Just bucking around. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So this is our old offices, our new office. Oh, here's some good some trophies. Bit. Yeah. You know, I still got to be a collector. Oh. Here's a big rig challenge. One of the years I won over there. Best in class shit spreading trophy. Yeah. No, that's SPM. Oh, oh, okay. This is Bowman. <laughs> Second place. That was when he beat you. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is one time I think I beat you, Brad. This is first place at Afton. Def I never pulled Afton, so that's why he beat. Well, me. he still beat you. He that's was first. Why, that's why. You, that's why you won it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is my favorite wrench. I got this at a tag sale for three bucks. It's a. Uh... <laughs> How big is that? Three and seven eighths. Have you ever used it? No. Okay. One day. So I'm one day, day, one day you'll need it. Mailbox. That's gonna be my mailbox. Um. Oh, on our here we uh, well, you know, Let's always supporting this. Mac. Oh, that's shout out nice, to all the boys. Nice um, shout out from uh, one of our very large customers, Tuscarora Dairy. Okay. They like to give us a nice note for Christmas. Goes a long way. It does. Take a step. Okay. That's our parts inventory up there. Parts, boxes, oil filters, air filters, intercoolers. Big radiators. fan of Baldwin filters or? Baldwin Napa. I mean, in, this is the way I look at it. On an E7, people in Haiti don't change their oil. <laughs> that is true. So, what we do, the dogs here at the kennel, we clip their nails every 250 hours. So, 
<laughs> Brad, Brad can't hold it together any longer. No, I'm a huge man. You gotta watch it. Don't cut the nails too short. It'll make a bleed. No, no, no. Max, don't. <laughs> He's cry. a professional. He knows. Single change. Well, everybody's gonna think you were born into this. How old are you? 33. I'll be 34. 121. 90. Okay. Or 121. January 21st. What do you mean? I don't know. They didn't know that information. You got your social on there? Too? <laughs> no, no. I don't even know my social. So everyone asks me, and they're like, "What's your social?" And I'm like, "I gotta call my mother." So we we were talking about how it all began, and he was. He thought he was a Peterbilt guy. Yeah, so my first trucks were actually international because I had international rollbacks. Well, I started off with Chevy. I had a Chevy rollback. It was really a dump truck with the sides cut off with a tail. So when you- For doing scrapping and Yeah, for towing. hauling scrap, yeah. And it was a 1984 Chevy C-70 with a 366, five speed high and low. Instead of having a vehicle in high school, I bought that. And that, that was a royal piece of shit. I remember the first time I drove it and I had a big van on it and I was going to raw steel. I slammed on the brakes and the rotors all broke and the pedal <laughs> went in and out, in and out, in and out. And I was like, oh my God. So we'll speed it up a little bit. I had the DT 466. It was a 1997 4300 International. It was my black rollback. So that was my only vehicle at the time. I sold my first 04 and a half, and I bought the rollback and a 225 BLC Caterpillar excavator. So I got rid of all of that, and I was like, okay, I need to buy a semi. And my dad's like, you need to buy a Mac. And I'm like, no, I don't want to buy a Mac. So I'm like, I'm going to buy a Peterbilt, because my dad would call me Sneaky Pete, because I would try and hide and not go to school and help him here. And so I was like, I want a Peterbilt. So then all the Peterbilt guys, like, were just a little bit different. And Sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry, dude. Sorry. Anybody that just got offended. Yeah, so I was like, all right, I'm going to get a Peterbilt. But then I was having breakfast on a Saturday morning with my parents. I was having eggs, and I was looking in truck paper when it was still actually paper yeah. not the plastic i've seen this w900 and i'm like well it's got a cat 3406e didn't know what that was sounded cool i was like as long as it's c15 whatever c15 means <laughs> i didn't know the difference 18 speed and it said heavy spec and they all said every single truck said heavy spec and to me i didn't know what heavy spec <clears throat> was i was 20 years old we went down and go to look at it and I told him I wanted a Peterbilt, and he says the Kenworth sit up higher because the exhaust goes underneath the cab. I was like, all right, whatever. And he walks over to the driver's side door and slams on the door as hard as he can. This is like a 65, 70-year-old guy. I'm like, what the hell is this guy's problem? And he goes, you ain't doing that with no Peterbilt. So we agreed on a price of $32,250. And the whole time I'm like perspirating because I'm like, yep, I can give you the cash right now. Meanwhile, I didn't have a pot to piss in. I had like two grand. And so I gave him $1,500 down to hold it. And I said, I'll be back next week with the money. And we'll get all the title and everything figured out. So then I had to come home and I was like a big Fisher plow collector because I wanted to sell snow plows in the winter. I said 18, 20 of them, so I sold all those. I was holding Cadillac converters. I sold all my Cadillac converters, rolled up all the change that I had, cleaned out all the cans and bottles here from the house, got rid of all my starters, alternators. I was saving brake drums, short steel, sold everything to buy this W900, and that's what started, that's what really leveled this up in the scrap industry. And it was just, you know, that's where this became today. And I still love Kenworth, but I like Mac because, you know, the oscillation of the Camelback, and it's, it works great for what we do. They're, they're farm trucks. Yeah. So is that W9 you have as your race truck, your original truck? Yeah, that's my first truck. That is why, so we did It's a, pretty sentimental. Yeah, that is, that like, you know, when my, if I ever have kids someday, he's driving that truck to haul. I don't know what he's going to haul. 
He's in Hall he's Manure. Do he's in Hall Bicycles. He's, hauling. he's hauling things. Yeah, Bicycle. when, when he's 16, he has his Zach Newton DA license. That means drive anything. You want to drive it to Florida? I don't care. Don't worry about the law. I'll pay the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got to be in a day cab. He's got to struggle in a day cab. Oh, yeah. Because when you're in a day cab, that means if you got like a log book, that means you drive till you're there. If it's 30 hours, you get there. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad told me so I would go on these trips when I was younger to go pick up this stuff or haul because then I bought a 4500 Dodge with a gooseneck and I would run that around everywhere and I'm like dad it's pretty far away it's you know 20 hours he's like you do it you drive it you focus and you get there and you get back home so that was my thing if you want to go and do something you drive till you get there you get loaded then you rest and then you drive home don't think Joe Biden is my buddy, but we're hiding from Biden. <laughs> I love it. See, that's inspirational because yeah. there's too many young people nowadays that wouldn't do any of this. Yeah. Wouldn't do. No, but there's before you leave, chance. like I don't know if this is still on. It's still on. Before you leave, you grease that truck yep. because if you don't know how to turn a wrench, you grease it. Yep. So the favoriteest thing is. I'm trailing back a little bit when we're talking about that W900. He said it was heavy spec. So all the Peterbilts I looked at, I could put my arms around the rear end and I didn't know this ratio from that ratio or nothing. And on this W900, it's got Spicer diffs and I could not put my arms around the rears. So, and then it's got, I know what they are now and they're SPL 250s and I couldn't put my hands around the SPL 250. And on- The drive shaft. Yes. And it was 18, 18 speed and he said it was the big 18 speed and so it was a 2250 18 speed which i found out later in life when we went to go truck racing kenworth ag 460 eight bag which is a great suspension some people don't like it because too many air leveling valves but there's a lot of first place trophies in my room it, that, it's that, treated you well over yeah. the years i mean new way is very superior our eight bag is a little bit different doesn't look like it came from <laughs> Top secret stuff. But what's that? Like, you were going to buy that truck now. 32.5 wouldn't even touch it. No, I, I mean, 60, 70,000 dollar truck nowadays. Yeah, but that truck had like 15,000 hours on it, which was high for 2010. Yeah. And, you know, it was a New York City truck, 235 inch wheelbase, and it's a W900L, a VIT interior. So it was all nice, all kinds of switches and gauges that I didn't know. Thanks. <laughs> Things on the yeah. dash. Yeah, and I just was like, man, girls are gonna love this. <laughs> See, that's the key. How, how's that work? No girls ever loved no. it. No. <laughs> Literally wish I, I washed this truck the other day, but obviously you can see she got plastic. You mean they get dirty when you work them? Yeah, well, it was about, well, one the other day I meant there's probably 50 hours on it since yeah. I washed it. Camelback, these are called 46s, not 44s, because they're running a mirror tour hub. I don't like the mirror tour hub because um, phone's dead, but it's harder to slide a floater tire up over here. Okay. It's, yeah. And because you can see Dude. how it goes in and on a normal Mac when it's all smooth. Yep. But it's a true roller tail, solid steel roller tail. This is- Which a, was an oil field truck. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, was al it was on an Alpha Crew. So that is your first line into the, this is the first one into the, this is your front line runner. It's got a big Braden winch, I don't know, 40 ton. And this truck, that winch will pull like a bastard. You get, you have that cable on the fifth wheel and it's sliding over the roller tail. You can roll some stuff over. Where did this come from? This came from Virginia. Hmm. Mac 18 speed, there's two PTOs on this, so you could, so this is why I love Mac transmissions, far superior over Eaton. Mac transmission is triple counter shaft, Eaton is obviously double. With this, you're able to put the transmission in neutral, and you could run this winch one through four with a high and low on each one through four for a variable speed, and it still has the wet line to run the shit trailer. I mean, look at this plate that was bent. That's all bent. 
you know, she was just on the front line all the time. This truck's pretty cool. This is an 18 speed E7 460 XT Miratore full lock. This is a, this truck I've driven to Nebraska, Michigan, Damn. Quebec. You pulled your pulling truck with this one, right? Yeah, yeah, I've sl yeah, this if if you lay across the seat and put a bunch of shirts, you you got a sleeper in the day. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> <laughs> right here, you put your lunch pail down and all your shirts and I can sit perfectly right in here and you could get there you go you don't even need a sleeper in it no. it sucks it really does <laughs> that's so wild yeah we've done like i don't know we probably put a hundred thousand miles on this truck it's it's been to van bauer equipment pop custom enterprises r brown inc um canada all over canada uh, we got pulled over by DOT in Quebec and they were yelling at me and Alex in French and because we were on a road that I guess no trucks were supposed to be on but we didn't understand French and... Have you learned any French over the years now? Uh, very minute. <laughs> Tabernac. Uh, is, is that a good word? No, that's not a YouTube trend. <laughs> So the French are, are known, but YouTube might be okay with it. Yeah. <clears throat> so we get pulled over and the guy's yelling at me in French and I put my arm out the door and pointed at Georgetown, New York. <laughs> and uh, he got a kick out of it. <clears throat> tickets or no? No tickets because I was like, I don't, I don't. I'm American. I'm just a dumb American. Well, he's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, honestly, I really don't know. Because we were lost going to Ladderay, so we're in central New York, so it's like j just look up straight and go 16 hours straight. Yep. So there were signs where it was like moose crossing, and wherever you see those like really massive log trucks where the logs are like 20 feet over the truck, that's where we were. Nope. And I would, we were the first American to ever go to that race, and that was my first Federation race that I won. And people were like shitting that what is an American doing here? Now you're going back there all the time or? We didn't when go it, back this year because we went to Cooling Brothers race. Yeah. I went there because I went to Big Rig Challenge in 2022 in May. And I was like so excited, excited to see all the Frenchmen. And they all kicked my ass. So I got a fifth place and the year before I got first place. So I was pissed. I was literally livid. I wasn't really like that pissed, but I was like, I'm going back to their hometown because Onaway was kind of like my hometown because it was the only race in the States. Yeah. Because Big Rig truck rate, uphill racing and whatnot, there's only a handful of places. In and, the States. Ca and Canada was much like they've been doing it for a long, long time. 40 years. So Latteray was their 40th anniversary. We went to Latteray. Never Americans ever been there. American has never won a Federation race, and we got a first and second, and I beat all those French guys that kicked my ass at Onaway. Yep. And I, that's where I earned my respect from them. That was really cool. <clears throat> so what's planned for 2024? Uh, depending. I want to pour a pile of concrete around here, do some mud elimination, and I want to finish that building, and I want to finish the lean-to. So truck racing might have to take another back seat because it's extremely time consuming. What about money? Go, what about money? Nothing about money. <laughs> I, I, I will be going to uh, this Diesels of uh, New York. There's this little like truck rodeo for all these like pickup things. Me and Brad have one. Yeah. With the semi? Yeah, I'm gonna bring the semi <laughs> because I just want to do donuts in their little burnout pen, <laughs> and I want to make people have a heart attack. Is this semi here? No, the semi is not here. It's at a friend of mine's house. And we're not going to see it, I guess. So it's, I keep it up there so it's not a distraction for the front line. we got to stay in the front line all the time. Um, but we will be at, uh, what is it called, Diesels of New York. We will be down there doing some 4,200 RPM donuts. <laughs> In a semi. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited for our boiler system. 
because this is a waste oil boiler and it's like I don't know how many thousand BTUs but it's enough to heat that concrete floor and it's enough to do all of our offices you have radiant in there radiant in there and this in here is forced air but if our forced air machine goes down we can have forced air over there so it's quite an excessive uh it's a setup yeah it's so is this your dream shop right now no 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 my dream shop is to be able to do donuts with my semi with the door shut <laughs> uh so both size and ventilation well yeah the fans we got so this building has eight fans and there's four in there but as you can still see there's a couple spots in here on the ceiling. We tried to clean them off this summer. Huh. Um, when you'd hit 4,000 RPM in the in, shop. Inside. And that's not. There true. is a video, and I might have to get it from you, of your truck on a tanker trailer. Yes, yes. So we were trying out a, a different turbo, and we were pulling like two foot tire with trailer one, which is outside. Not all of them are in tonight. There's uh, one. There's eight trucks in here. If you really pack them in for going to like work the next day aggressively, you could put them all in here. Okay. But you gotta pack them in. Yeah. Let me get a knife. This is Torque DX. We run this in our race truck. We'll open it up for you guys. We haven't done the math on what that pencils out to, but that is not the cheapest diesel you could buy. I'm gonna tell you that. No, it's uh... so that's the magic that gets you first place. Seven fifty. Seven fifty a gallon. No, a, a barrel. Seven hundred fifty gallons of or seven hundred fifty dollars a barrel. Fourteen dollars a gallon at our cost. And it's usually so. You told us that racing truck takes time, mm -hmm. but not money. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> I mean, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. <laughs> if you had a good knife, bud. No, that's alright. Uh, maybe it needs a better operator. <laughs> I don't want to open it. We haven't even talked about the Dakota over here. Oh, that's one of our employees' winter gear. That, that's a rig. And it's really cool because it's five speed V6 and it's like a great scoot around vehicle. Mm -hmm. He's got to do some brakes in it, so he brought it in ordered all the parts this weekend and uh so how many guys you got that work for uh there's 17 of us 17. Pretty, pretty tight let me pretty, get pretty. you guys gotta smell that it's, pretty. it's crazy you guys aren't gonna be able to smell it but we will isaiah will give us a review on the smell of <laughs> race diesel fuel which i've never ever thought about race diesel fuel you got the pulling guys that like mix up contra contraptions and cocktails throw a little gas in there. yeah a little bit yeah. of this a little bit of that and or some of us throw a little bit too much gas too much gas in the mix <laughs> you want to tell us about that brad no doesn't run doesn't run with too much gas and diesel gas, your, your gas diesel ratios off a little bit what? the old school pulling throw a little gas there a little uh no nitro octane. no you need hydraulic oil you don't know the trick <laughs> hydraulic oil. That's, when I was a I, well, that's why you're no longer a puller. You like high guard or that cheap case shit? Or no, like... any hydraulic oil we used to run. So, <laughs> I can't tell you where we used to get it, but my buddy stripper Steve and I's mother had a hardware <laughs> How come store. everybody has a nickname? <laughs> yeah. So stripper Steve and I used to get that from mothers. Mm. All right, you guys got to get right into this. It's the first you gotta, the waft. You got to get the waft. You got to get the waft. If there is, if we're all going to be laying on the ground. No. All right. Come on in, bud. Yep, ready? <laughs> you don't smell it? Yeah. What the fuck? It smells like straight Simpico racing fuel. It smells like power service. Yeah. Oh, I smell like blue, baby. <laughs> So this will be, you have your light on there. Wow. This will be my secretary's office. Hold on. I'm gonna pull the old light back out. Yeah, flex her down. This will be my secretary's office. We put baseboard heat out of the used oil. Yep. People say I'm half Indian because I use up all of our 
sources from the Max. And uh, this is going to be our secretary's office. Um, I wanted a. Uh... That, that gives you such. <laughs> There's your thumb. I know. That is going to be the thumbnail, I think. What? Us all standing here with your trucks behind it. Because yeah. it. So. Tall ceilings. Because you're gonna lift, you're gonna lift the truck, yes. but it just gives you so much more space. Well, so this is why I went with 26 foot. If we lift my W900, it doesn't have 13 foot stacks on it. They're like 10 and a half foot tall. But if I did have a truck with 13 foot stacks on it, and I wanted to lift it all the way up, it's not gonna hit the doors or the fan yep. with the stacks. And that's if I lifted it 13 feet off the ground. So that's why I went with 26. Our other building is 16 foot high. Yep. And we went with- This is shop goals, to be honest. We went like, with- This is what now? Shop goals. Oh. All of this. No, not for like, them. I know, this yeah, is just yeah. a stepping stone. So in five years, we'll have to come back for another shop door? Burnouts. <laughs> and no, burnouts, burnouts and shop doors. Yeah, but that would be down, to, that shop would be down to my house, maybe. <laughs> I live just down the street. I bought a small farm down the street. It's insane. Oh, I need to take you into there. You're gonna love that. <laughs> no, but anyway, more of the story for the four bays. This is our Jiffy Loop shop. That over there is major repairs. This is our Jiffy Loop. So that means you bring in four trucks a day or four pieces of equipment. You run 20 pieces of equipment a day. Five days a week, you each truck gets serviced once a week. Fluids checked. Brakes adjusted, clutches adjusted, automatic, no adjustment, and uh, grease. You need to grease and you need to do the booms. Again, now I feel horrible that the trucks are all messy, but we had an aggressive shit truck in the week. And unexpected business. Unexpected. Yeah. Up until, I don't even know, three hours? Well, two hours before we came here, yeah. we were not expected to be here. Like, hey, which coast is that? So here we are. Thanks, Brad. This is going to be a, a bathroom for the secretary so she doesn't use the ones for the employees. So it's going to be a small bathroom here. And then this right here is going to be just a small kitchen. If the guys want to come up and get a cup of coffee, there'll be a refrigerator, microwave, stuff like that, a small stove, heat some stuff up. So you were saying that first shop you put up, or the first that section over there was bare bones to get by to do everything and now you're getting more of the creature comforts of life yes yeah. so and that was, employees and everything else like that that was baller on a budget we had a bathroom outside we used the old milk house for water the floor was flat i added windows this year we still have to put uh power door uh, power garage doors in there we added the fans over the years we added the back door um, so that was something to get us rolling because the key to success in a company is you need to have a home base infrastructure. And this is my office because I wanted to have a window to look at the equipment. You can't see because it's dark, but this is a, a tool. You can see up on our hill. Yeah. There's 300 acres behind here. And then you can see the lean-to, and there's a huge parking lot, couple acre parking lot down there, and that's where we park the silage trucks, because the silage trucks and the shit trucks have their own parking lot. Because I've looked at like yards in New York City, and the dump trucks have their own parking area, and the concrete trucks have their own parking area. So I just, Wanted to base it off a lot like, more organization. You can't, you can't it, on your food touch. I'm mean, yeah. late. You know. Yeah. Brad's big about that. No, no. no, no. <laughs> I'm big. Trucks roll. Trucks can't touch. Yep. Everybody, we talked Brad into climbing up on it, and uh, really appreciate it, Brad, for the thumbnail. Like that? Yeah. You put the extra effort in. Creature comforts. It. It's not only for you. It's for it's, employees. It's the fact that you have this many guys that. Hauling shit is not a glamorous job. No. At all. We're shit truckers in the 315 just trying to stay alive.
<laughs> Is that a bumper sticker yet? No. <laughs> so I wanted to do this. A pile of our guys are always like, we have a couple of us that don't mind getting dirty. So I wanted to say, hey, before you go home to your wife and girlfriend, yeah. if you are covered in shit and grease and we're doing like a yucky transmission job or something, you can come in, take a shower before you come home because I want to... I want to jump our level from professionalism from years past. From here, I want to go up to here. So we have a walk, you know, a shower. And a happy wife is a happy life. Haven't had one yet, so I have no experience. <laughs> so we have that's what that's what we've heard. <laughs> yeah. So and this, my favorite thing is is like in our other building, I didn't do any tapered floor, which really sucked because. All I'm doing is squeegeeing. When you wash you anything, the water just Vomits stays. everywhere. So and then it's... you have like 10 squeegees. So over here, I did a four by four area that's tapered. So when you walk through the back door, because we have some guys that do park over here in the summer, you can clean up when you're done over here, wash your boots off, clean up. It all goes to the drain. There's a 16 foot square block right here. This is one of our washing areas. Sorry, stuff is not done. Yep. There's a 16 foot block that goes through a drain over here. You mean you actually work on trucks here? Yes, we do. I okay. I, I am, uh, well, this is Volvo, so it needs a little bit love more than a dog. But, <laughs> you a little, know. little jab. Yeah, I mean, I, I still love Volvo because... They, they kept Mac alive. Yeah, they did, but there ain't no better engine than an E7. E7 is better than C15. Any C-Series E7 is better. You are good. There is going to be some angry here. people in the comments. That's okay. Peterbilt. I'm anti -pe Unless, okay, I like a Peterbilt. Let me rephrase the Peterbilt that I do love. If you have a 379, long hood or short hood, or a nice 378, I'm anti-air track. Uh, the comments, just let me have it. You need <laughs> there to you have it. Give me, put, put yourself a nice 379. I want it to sit up. I want 16,000 pound springs. 20,000 pound front axle, 315s, new way in the caboose, Rockwell, Spicer, Meritor rear, I don't really care. You know, a nice big 52,000 or 46,000 heavy housing. You know, I'm all about that. But most of your Peterbilts are rolling out of the factory. Yeah, 18 speed's cool. You know, whatever. You got your Cat C15, whatever. But they got air track with Eaton DS 404s, 402s. They got baby rears, mm -hmm. and then they're advertised as heavy spec because they got four and a quarters on the front. Well, that's not cool. A lot of your Kenworths are on the front line. The exhaust is underneath the cab. Your feet rattle. Your feet are sweating in the summer. You know, but a Kenworth oh, sits up a little bit higher. You know. I'm a, you know, Kenworth, I like Peterbilt, but there's very few Peterbilts that I do love. Mm -hmm. And I, I do like Peterbilt, but they're, they're hard to find that are spec nice. Okay, comment section. Yeah. Put, put some more, let's see how it goes. So we tapered the floors here. They're 14 foot back tapered to the door and they're tapered from the center over here so each bay that, can drain. That's got quite a little bit of elevation in between. Yes, I don't it, want any, I want minimum squeegee. Yep. And then we put ballards everywhere because I like the professional yellow look when we go to- Inside like, and out. Inside and out. And there's a 30 foot apron that's 234 feet long. So that is pretty cool. And on our original facility, we didn't have any windows in the doors baller on a budget and now we have windows and doors very nice it's little things like that <laughs> yeah, so nice when you can see out yeah it, but not, not too tall or is it oh, oh. Or not? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh we have so right here we have welder outlets right here is where our oil is going to come out right here again this facility is not finished yet we're gonna have oil and air on each Oil will be here, and you can go 60 foot reels so you can get to each piece of equipment. Yep. And then there'll be air on each side of the shop. But that is one of our winter projects. No. You got your all light? Yep. Do you? 
No, my battery ran down. I'm waiting for Isaiah to give me another one. Oh, <laughs> oh there's the Tenando cranes. Okay, so what's the deal with the cranes? So there's two cranes that are over here. You have two total or three? There's three. Uh, one of them, uh, one crane truck is at a buddy of mine's house. He's setting some trusses with it and it's a little bit very far. But um, these are for sale. Yeah, these are for sale. 82 foot reach, 18 ton, or 18 ton crane. Uh, this one here had like 1,100 hours and that one over there had 400 hours. Asking price? 20,000. Each? Each. Export. Three. We're available for export. We love to export. So if anybody is interested, in Zach, Zach gave us an awesome tour. This is our sales pitch. Somebody buy these. Please. So they're not sitting here any longer. Yeah, I do not like clutter. And, I and he, he, the only reason he has them is they came off the trucks. Yeah, so we bought the trucks for shitters and silagers. Each uh, door is labeled. Every one of your doors is Every labeled. one of the doors is labeled. So if you have a new employee and he's unfamiliar with the facilities, you could use the instructions that are above the door. I like that. Professionalism. It's very nice. professional. Absolutely. Like very, very. I'm sorry about our mats over here. We got Mac rears. Oh, Mac what are those? Oh, those are you guys' foreign quarters. <laughs> This is actually why we, we look, came here. Heavy. These came off of, they're good tread. They're nice, evenly worn. Sorry, even the snow. They're Chinese tires, but so is in every tire. Um, they, came, they came off truck 17 before it went to export. Yep. And uh, we put all these on there because in Haiti, they don't. Oh, they don't care about tires. They don't need no. tires when no. they're going. No. Nope. And. This never got done, so that was supposed to be the storage building. So how big is this compared to that? What do we got well, sizes? 60 by 120, and it's 12. There's 90 feet in between here, and it's 12 feet farther back. So the truck should make a nice corner out. Yeah. But they're the same size? The original facilities are the same size, 60 by 120. Huh. And that's why there's only there was only three original doors in there for storage. Yeah. Whereas you got your two bigs. Yeah, this is uh, main door eight, and there is no um, no electrical in here. But we had underground plumbing put in here for our electrical. So this is storage in here. This is my Lodi, which I own since 2011. So this was a scrap handler. Yeah, it was an IT machine, and I had a little grapple on the front, forks, bucket, and a street sweeper, because they don't like dust. Yeah. Here's the floater tires. There's a couple of new ones in here, but not many. But there's maybe three or four. Here's a pile of brand new four and quarters. Um, and these are all rimmed up that came off the shivers. So there's a mound of tires in here. They're giving these away now, right? No, I wish, but we buy them, like I said, shipping container loads. Direct from Israel and. Yep, from Alliance. Just so. I, I think I paid, I think I paid four grand for mine for a set of four. New. They were slightly used, but that was. Eighteen hundred now a tire. Probably suggested retail. We get them far cheaper than that. Yeah. You only got to buy like sixty to do it. Get it though. Shipping no. container load 62. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping a bucket. But could you do your business without them? Floaters, no. No, you need them. Oh, especially on this year? Um, you guys weren't as wet as us, right? No, but we there were spots that were wet. And the other thing is, my favorite thing is we have to have community relations. So we need to have consideration with mud on the road. Hence why we have Lodi still with their street sweeper. Yep. So when we're going to our large accounts, we'll drop off Lodi. And so then she can make sure the streets are all clean for our neighbors because... Happy neighbor makes life so much better. Yeah, so we have to have community relations. As much as it is being hot rodders, as much as it is to be fun, we need to make sure that trucks all have mufflers, jig brakes are you know monitored in communities. Or Scott. Hey. You know. Where's Scott? We need. Oh, I got another load of tires that you guys love. Yeah. So this is our drag hose service truck. 
We we saw it at, when we were in Ohio. Oh yeah. We pointed it out a little bit, but we didn't actually see much. Yep. She got turdied on by the crawler. The crawler had a. You have two crawlers, noon crawlers. Yeah, two noon crawler X's. Crawler, uh, noon is uh, for everybody on the camera. Noon is far superior than the bam or the bazooka. <laughs> the bazooka oh, here we stuff. go. So That's going to get some people worked out. I would love for all of them to harass me because <laughs> noon is far superior. Ian didn't pay you, right? No, Ian did not pay me. They just do one thing for me, and that is customer relations. We had an issue with the fuel tank on a Friday. We had an issue. I told them, could you guys get down over here and fix this? No questions, no hesitation. They were here Monday morning at 8 o'clock. I would like to see Farmstar do the same service. They might, but I don't think so. This is our little service truck. It is a th you know three-person cab. We have a welder, crane, air compressor, and every single tool that we need on this to make sure the drag hose runs smoothly. So when did you get this? A year ago. And big game changer? Huge game changer, but it's I love it's it. pricey. It is. It's expensive. It's a little dirty right now. We've been in the mud. You know, it's a hand shaker. We can move our crawler, move hose reels. That's got sweet, though, that it's three-seater. Yeah, it's got a two-way radio to have communications with our employees, heat, air conditioning. It's got a power inverter if guys want to have some lunch and stuff like that. Yep. It's a, ser it's a service rig. Yeah. Yeah, don't look at that. Yeah, now we can't be on camera. Well, now that you said that. <laughs> um, but you guys would love what's in here. So there was a sale on BKT tires. So we got some new tires for the front of our articulator today and uh, the rear of our truck. <laughs> and for storage reasons, I like to put stuff in the silent truck. Going up, bud. I'm not yet. You go. I'll watch. Here. Pass me this in a minute. Here, you want me to hold it? Your hand, Joe. That's a big torsion pass right there. Wow. Big pictures. I don't want to get up there. So there is four rear tires. Brad, you wouldn't believe it. You got to get up here. Yeah. So these are <laughs> BKT. Uh, these were on sale, you said. Yeah, I got, uh, there was a small sale that they gave to me for buying these tires. So we bought eight of them. And what is this going on? Our articulator on the front because we did the rear. Um, few, uh, about a year ago, and then these rears are for the 7920. Yep. Drag line tractors. Yes. Yep. One's to move the hose, and the other one is to is the application machine. So I figured. Wild. To keep stuff in stock, we got to do it now. You love putting them in the beds. Yeah, I put tons of stuff inside of the truck beds. It makes so much sense because they sit empty all winter. Yeah, they sit empty, so we'll put these on in the spring. Yep. You know, we'll put these on in March, and uh, then we're ready to go. And I'm sure they gave these away too, right? I didn't get the bill yet. I just <laughs> pointed in order. Yep. Tire truck and we have fuel all the tires that we're currently running. So if a truck has a flat, nobody said they can bring the wrong tire because it's You have thing. everything on the truck. Yes. Probably some tools aren't in there because they got borrowed. And yeah. Didn't, That's case. pretty neat though. That's a good thought. Yeah, like, you know, if we're during corn silage or anything like that, you need to, you need to be ready to go. Like so, a truck down is not making money. No, it's just well, causing headaches. Well, then the other thing is, if you got a truck down, you know, the it's our responsibility to take care of the dairy farmer, and if we can't be there, then how good are we? Yep. So let's see. Let's show you some other cool stuff. <laughs> oh, there's my salt for my salt sander, because when we're on slippery roads, I get a little salt sander behind my little black service truck. Yeah. So you keep the trucks moving. It goes back to the. It goes back to if we say we're gonna do a job, we're gonna do the job. This is your daily. The Mac van. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You know, 
doesn't have every tool you need, but it's got... Keeps you moving. You know, it's big rolling. These are pounding your terror disc. So what do you run for drag line? You run that? We have that. We have a uh, John Deere Ripper, a Puck Ripper, and we have an R Brown Ink uh, Ripple Bar. How's the, how's the dribble bar been? Uh, dribble bar's been excellent For due to the fact that you're putting the manure on in the roots where it needs to be applied. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that really helps significantly, you know, on reducing some smell. And So how many millions of gallons of manure do you think you move a year? Oh, I don't know. Let me drag hose. It's, we're not in drag hose area. No, it's a lot of hills and small fields small and small fields and still, you know, housing and stuff. Yep. So we probably do, I don't know, 65 million gallons a year with the drag hose. And uh, I don't know how much the trucks move, but we run 10 trucks a day. 200 million? Mm -mm. I don't, I don't really know how much the trucks run through. We run 10 trucks a day all the time, 10 and a half months a year. So that's somebody do. Do it down below. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody tell him how much he's moving, but 65 million with the dragos. Yeah. Well, again, we don't push a ton of through. That's we don't push. That's quite a bit though. Yeah, there's some. And how long have you been drag? It hasn't been 2018. 2018. Okay. You know, we're growing with the dairies. We're gr growing. Yep. With the dairies. dairies are growing, uh, consolidating, and everything. It's the nature of the business. Yeah. So. These are some silage trucks that we just washed up, cleaned up. So these will be coming in first for service next week. So they're outside. This is an automatic. And this is truck 42 and truck 36. This had a Tenando crane. Okay. So you took the crane off, which the cranes are for sale, and you put the box on. Correct, yeah. Put the floaters on, put the two-way radio, and she's automatic. And she's gone. Yeah. And uh, here's another 07 CV713. With the Diller uh, live body. That was my first Diller live body we purchased in 2014. Thoughts on that? I, I like it. I mean, it really sucks when the chain breaks and you shovel it. Yep. Fork it over, but it, it does good. I like it. That automatic, too? No, this is a uh, Mac 10 speed. Okay. So, 29 foot. Yeah, 29.6. You just sold it to me for dirt cheap. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I got that during COVID. That was great pricing during COVID. And everybody has three axles usually, which yeah, for what we're doing really doesn't yeah, add up. It's just to bring home equipment and to haul the race truck. Yep. It's handy. Oh, very handy. And then here's a new tank and stock that will be for, this is number 19. New tank made to our specs here yep. at Newton Ag Service. You have a truck already for this? Yes. That is not here. That is down to my house. So what are these? Uh, 40, 5, 5,000 5,000? 20 foot. So question, why 10 wheelers? Uh, because we run a lot of 10 wheelers here for the smaller driveways, smaller fields. Sometimes it's harder to get into certain locations, so we run a lot of 10 wheelers. 10 wheelers do well for us. Okay. So I like them. They look, you know, they do. Good. They do good. We set up what we have for our customer base. So you know, out by you guys in Albany, or out by guys Rochester, Buffalo, where, where it's flat, and you got big, uh, yeah, big uh, thousand cow farms. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game. Is, uh, you got to go with your customer base. Yep. And that's what we that's what we try to do is is do the needs of our customers. So are aluminum fenders standard? Aluminum fenders are now standard, yes. Okay. So, Thoughts on the tank, though? Um, always going to be Diller? Yes, we will always have Diller. Years ago, they used to have wood underneath. We spoke to them so they can have rub rails on the bottom so the wood doesn't rot. We talked to them about the aluminum fenders. Um, we have Intake Agitation Factory. Um, For hauling sand. Correct, yes. And we have these in here for easy clean out, the manhole covers. And they went with the, we had issues with the remotes in the back when they had the black box in the back. So we had them change it all to this. And now this is standard equipment. And that's been very good? 
Yeah, it's been great. Fantastic. They did some of their upgrades. Um, we do a solid stripe down the side, not a cutout for where the dealer decal goes. We do solid stripe. Okay. That's what happens when you have this many tanks. So Correct. We have uh, 19 pieces of dealer equipment. And are, very happy. You're going to buy more. Yeah. Well, I want I was almost going to buy two more the other day so we could be uh, tied with the guys in California. But I, <laughs> I said we got to use what we got. 2024. Yes. Because there's always manure, no matter what. Yep. Yep. Well, and somebody's got to move it. Yeah, we do. We, uh... As we know. Well, this stuff is just so much nicer because we have pipe stuff. You never know what you could need. So I need a bolt bin, never mind pipe stuff, but I've never actually thought about fittings. But you're doing hydraulic work. You're doing all sorts yeah. of other stuff. Our hydraulic lines are over there in the corner. We, since we hit, we had to move a bunch of stuff around for our new facility. So all this stuff isn't perfectly organized yet and they're not all in the same area. But you never know what you need for fittings when you're extending some frames making your own hydraulic stuff, hydraulic clamps, all kinds of stuff. I don't know what's in here. Um, <laughs> just it. airline fittings, like when oh, you it's, have a- It's copper wire ends. Yeah. Like, what do you need? We have- them. They're we have, there. Yeah. Our bolt bin is in our old area. Maybe it's gotta first, not last. Have a future, not a past. So we just got this Quincy air compressor like two years ago. It's super sweet. I yeah. love it. Um, here's our old receiver dryer and everything inside. And yeah. So here's our old bolt bin from a long time ago, which I love. Yep. Up there is our Mac parts storage. It's a little disorganized from corn silage, but I'd love to. All right, it. we'll do a little run through. Oh, here's your Mac PTO. You want it? Nope, different. Wrong one. It's not going to do it. Nope. They come off the back. Oh, excuse me. That's right. Yep. So I'm, get, I'm trying to get Zach to find me a Mac PTO. So we've got some brake stuff. We have a new truck seat, um, air cans. Uh, Every hose you need. Yeah, tons of hoses. Sorry, this is unorganized. Um, John Deere filters, air dryers, tons of airline, more filters, cross members, shifters, Mac axle shafts. Starters, everything. Yeah, just as you get up, I mean, these are air filters. We got AC condensers, all the air filters we run, air to airs, and, and on the back over there is uh, a radiator for a matte granite. I'm sorry, up here is very disorganized, but I'm-, I'm You know where it is. Yeah. Oh, it, if anybody that has a Mac knows that you need to stock these, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I don't have that issue. Yeah, that is, yes. Uh, we have the weird, funny Mac hub studs. Yeah. Uh, axle bearings, stuff like that. There's, the hu there's hubs underneath over there. There's starters. There's exhaust white pipes that are hard to get that are on back. So order. you're your own personal truck stop is yeah. really what it is. Yeah, but with we, a business. Yeah, but we don't share. Yeah. Like other dairies that we work for that have Max, if they need parts, they'll come over and grab stuff. Oh, there's a it's insane. Granite but fan. but you don't. Like, Nobody knows what these are. Anybody that owns a Diller will knows about these. If you want your boom to see them, winter projects. Ooh. Oh, we have Diller bearings right here for our silage trailers and silage trucks. We get studs, solenoids. Uh, more sonoids for the air sonoids. So you're number one or two parts supplier for Diller? No, but Diller was <laughs> pretty low close. on parts one time and they called us for some stuff, but I didn't want to give it up because it was during COVID yeah. and I got really afraid. We have idler pulleys for Mac. You were saying earlier you bought a whole pallet of um, motors, motors, of hydraulic the motors in the back. Yeah, I bought a whole pallet. Through COVID because you were worried about it. Yes, yeah, so we have clutches downstairs and there's a pile of transmissions over there and there's transmissions in the other building Potential. and all that goes back to keeping your customers happy yeah if we don't have this stuff like what are you going to do when you call mac and they're like oh it's during corn silage that's on back order what are you going to do four weeks yeah like this white pipe right here remember you don't, you don't think it's that big of a deal but on a truck with dual stacks and you don't want to like ravage it that's um, a big deal 
Yeah, this part, these, this part right here, during like after COVID and like even a year ago, because I bought two back order. Took three weeks to get it, so I said buy two. Mm -hmm. um, just so we can have it. We uh, Napa. We bought. We buy Napa and Baldwin. There was an issue with getting Baldwin oil filters this year, so I bought Baldwin and Napa because so then we had both. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I could use one of these. I'll take one of them. One of these. Oh, we have Mac pumps, hydraulic pumps in stock. Oh, we've got downpipes. <laughs> you don't know on a Saturday on a silage truck and you need a downpipe. Yep. What are you going to do? These are for your Mac Granite CV713, CTP713, all of our 03 to 07 Macs. We've got 15 of them. Take this. And who wants to drive a truck when the exhaust is literally is coming right into the cab? Yeah. John Deere filter housing, push rods, jake heads. It's turbos up here. There's a new Max it, Turbo in one of these boxes. Um, people think you just get in the seat of the truck and right drive here. no issues this ever. This clutch Switch fan out. is on. Oh, there's your clutch fan right there. Nope. No. I would need one without the clutch. Oh, you just need a straight one? Yeah. Oh, so you need a straight fan all the time on. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's your, this is your older Mac hem joints. Here are cross member brackets for your drive shaft. This is a middle top cover for your Eaton. You should 1400 buy to 1800 series transmission. Louisville. <laughs> oh, wow. Fighting words. Fighting words. Max side covers in stock because they, they're aluminum and they're now plastic and they get rusty. Oh, Max clutch cables we have. Are the seals still on those? Yes. I put them on when I get them. Why, you uh, had that issue? Somebody forgot the seals? Shoelace. What do you think they do in Haiti? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so RV windshield and a this is a complete inside gut of the, for your R series cab windows. Yep. Yeah, and we all know those go bad. You can, well, you These can get them from HD part HD HD parts now. Is correct, that but this was like during COVID pricing. So now, like, I just went. That's gold. Yeah, they were now they're like seven hundred bucks. Yep. These were like three hundred fifty bucks a door. Um, oh, here's your idler pulleys. You don't know how bad this happens you need it um here's uh 20 000 pound front axle wheel bearings is that stuff like that is that matt mac fan uh after they did the update kit for the fan clutch or before after because i have an updated fan clutch right here so Wait, waited three and a half weeks for a fan so some of you, you guys talking about some of you might YouTube. might have wondered where the gmac was three and a half weeks waiting on it was longer than that it was a week to get it in and then three and a half weeks to wait for parts and zach had that and the fan in stock in stock yeah. and oh okay if you guys are unsure about converting your mac and you need hard parts if you have a transmission that blows and you want to convert it to a eaton we have the mounts for rd and gu and we have them for the metric frame max in stock hidden in my little stash secret can't see where it is pumps okay well now you guys know what it takes to keep a fleet like this on the road oh here's a usa body upright cylinder it's all these little things that add up that nobody ever expects. No, no. Like ever. Like, just just to move cow feed and cow poop. Yeah, we have a hydro, our home hydraulic motion machine. These are for sale too though. Yeah, right? Alex is selling these. Yep. Alex makes these fuel tanks and sells those. He was here earlier when we showed up. Isaiah knows him. Mm -hmm. Alex sure. Um Here's the hydraulic hose area. Again, it's we haven't done our fall cleanup from corn silage yet. Well, what the last four months have been nothing but nonstop. Uh, since you spread manure August all summer, 15th, all spring, yeah. it slows down a little bit. 
Yeah. You get back into feed and manure. Yep. And then all of a sudden fall comes and. Yeah, so we haven't done a major fall cleanup. And this winter we'll go through the whole facility, a few of us, and we'll organize everything. We will do the organization before we start our fall or our winter repairs. Cool little tables that we got scattered around here, our steel area. We may be super heavy duty. Uh, saw horses. Yep. And you got your selection all for hydraulics and everything else? Yes, so the only stuff we have here is the stuff that we use. So we have all the fittings for our lagoon crawlers and all the fittings that we need for our shitters. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. We have hydraulic lines that go from the tank to the tractor pre-made. Those are up there in the corner hidden so they don't get cut up. Oh, the front ones? Yeah, or? yeah, so we have those pre-made. So do you run solid tube from the back to the front? No, right? Diller does. Diller does, but nothing's, you don't have any that are in the tank, right? Because no. that used to be the thing. That used to, and I still kind of like it because they'll cool your hydraulic system. I've heard that, but at the same point. Then if they get loose, they wear and then they break. Yes. So And I mean, then all your hydraulics or all the manure goes in. Yeah, and vice versa. you have all the yucky manure in your hydraulic system. Yep. And, uh, we're doing a transmission on this one. This is a uh, 1800 series 13-speed. And we put an 8 low low in it. Eight you low. do transmissions in-house or you send yeah, them? No, in-house. Oh, like repair them or? Re you R &R? repair them. No, we do not repair in-house. No? We use Fry Heavy Duty. They do it every day and we'll just send it out up there and they fix them. Is that the same as Andy? Uh, or I he, think Andy uses he goes, uh, Flea Pride it, and Fry. Yeah. Fry is my personal favorite. If you need somebody, contact Mark or Charlie and please harass them and then when you're in tell, there tell them Zach told you <laughs> yeah when you're in there tell them you want a fresh batch of popcorn and then you drop all the pieces of popcorn as you walk around in the shop where it says no employees and then go harass Dennis and ask him when it's going to be done and then he just yells on top of his lungs to leave me alone but I love the guys I'm, I'm sorry Heavy guys Duty. they are my best friends yeah. they are amazing Oh, here's a really cheesy tool board that I made like 10 years ago when I had no money and couldn't afford a toolbox. I'm at that point. So I made my cute little triangle tool board on wheels that you can roll around with all my little special collection of parts. Random stuff that you've used over the years. Yep, yep. And so I'm, you got a full-time mechanic and shopper? Yeah, uh, Matt is our um, shop foreman and he does a ton of work and I help them when I'm not, when I'm available. Alex does our hydraulics and our fabrication, and those guys take care of that stuff for us. There's a couple other guys that are their hand. Their best friend, Fred, is on the front line with those boys all the time. They get along really, really well. Um, and I love to buy grease. This is the grease in case- they That's all grease? Yeah, I buy it in a pallet. Okay. So we use Simpico double duty. I, is, that, is that the best? Because I had the Simpico rep come this spring and yeah, I was impressed. I love Simpico due to the fact we used other brands and I am a huge fan, as you guys can see, of the manual grease gun because I want to feel it going in. Yep. And this grease will pump in all weather. And my favorite thing about it is you can use it on everything but your slack adjusters, your bearings and your pins and bushings. And I love this. It does a great job for us. It keeps us on the front line all the time. And as you can see, we buy it by the pallet. Mm -hmm. We go through a pallet every 16 months. Um, and then down there is our fifth wheel grease also. We get that in a 15 gallon drum. So wh why the difference? Uh, because it's cheaper. And then I scoop that out and put it in one of our muddy pails that guys can use. Yeah, just to slaughter And I mean, sometimes like... If, if we, you got a ha half a tube or something. Yeah, like around. this one got yanked, so we put it over here. I like to keep stuff in stock that we use all the time. I really love using fluid film. Not really for lubrication, just to spray. This is not a sales promotion right now. Um, <laughs> My tea grease, I use it, I buy whatever's on sale for 
Just like the chains on the back of the dillers. Yep. Brake clean, I buy what's on sale. Thunderbolt, I really enjoy this more than like a PB blaster due to the fact that there's more in this can. Kano Corolla is the best and we all know that, but it's 10 times the money. And I hate when we misuse it. Which I didn't even know it was a thing until somebody told me. No, Kano Corolla is like your real deal. I have a heat, secret hidden stash of it somewhere. Don't, but don't tell anybody this. because then they're gonna know. Yeah. Your employees are gonna be over there using it. You no, know, I don't know if it's still over oh, there. Oh, nope, nope. We're not gonna look at it. Oh, there's a little bit of it over there. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is our old uh, office. We'll still use it. But you're upgrading, not yeah. only for yourself, but for your workers. Yeah, for the employees. Like I want to do, I, we, and it's not only for our employees, it's really for our customers due to the fact that the more sophisticated we can be here, the more sophisticated we can be there. And if we're not sophisticated, they're either going to outsource it in another resource, it, resource or they're gonna do it in-house. So we're always competing against our competitors and our customers. To give them the best product at the end of the day. Yeah, so that's why we try to have unison with a lot of the granites. And that's why we try to go with some of the automatics. Mm -hmm. Get up out my trap house. So you got a trap house. Yeah. Full of Mac parts. Yeah. Huh. Oh my. Don't put that down. You don't need that. I think I do need that. That is. Yeah, chrome. I that I have one of them. It's only got a little rust. That one's actually in great shape. Well, if it's all of them. Oh my god, get that off here. You got any two uh, outlet air cleaners? Oh, uh, those are really rare. Um, or that Mac pump right there that <laughs> should go home with me too. Where? That one right there. Oh, that's for B Mac two. P seventy one hundred. Here's another power steering pump. This was organized until I towed it up here. <laughs> oh, there's your air cleaners. Yeah, I need a I need a dual one though. What do we got in here? All right. Jake brakes. <laughs> Wait, you have Jake's? Yeah. For what? Mac. For what though? E7. Okay, never mind. Well, there might be E6 in here. I used to have a You gotta come in. <laughs> you gotta go into the sleeper cave also. <laughs> I love I'll, this. I'll wait for you. Brad, if we don't come back out, send some help. <laughs> yeah, watch out. There's a raccoon that lives in here. Alright, I think I see it. I'm gonna shoot. These are C18 mechanical chemicals in here. Uh, oh no. This is this is E6. It's E6, Jake. This is Dynatard E6. No, I need actual Jake's. Oh. There is a guy in Pennsylvania that's got a set. We're gonna one day we're gonna get there. This door's locked! <laughs> God. I cannot believe. Oh, there's Mac. It's a little bit a lot easier to get in this one. Yeah, but it only opens in the inside. Comet front hubs for a Mac. Uh, cap C18 injectors. Brain in. Cap. There's a lot of them. Fuel pump. Uh, SCP conversion parts in the tanks. Here's this kit. Here's dump pumps that we took off the trucks. See, this gate yeah. valve. Yeah, we gotta go and look in the other trailer. The other one? Well, we gotta go in that sleeper kit. This, this is Here honestly amazing. Uh, like, Mac fuel, oh, uh, cap parts. Yep. There's a after cooler, turbo. Yeah, there used to be a lot more. Um, I'm just amazed. Just like so, people are gonna look at this and they're like, "Oh, you just got a pile of junk." No, but I know what's in here. That's the thing. Like I know, I put all this that in. that drive shaft is make or break for the day. Yeah, like yeah. stuff like that. That that's no, 1810. That goes in all of our straight shit trucks. Like <laughs> it's it's the stuff like that. Yeah, that which like, is mind boggling because I 
before this year, I was zero prepared for anything I ever did most days. Yeah. And I got more stuff on the shelf now, but not enough. Yeah, well, there's a Mac engine over here with a bad cam, and I took the heads. Home Mac fuel systems. I don't, I don't think you guys I'm understand. I'm trying to think if that will work or not. For it will. Yeah. That is your well, air cleaner. Well, why doesn't, you don't have one? Mine's rusted out. I can't, I would feel, if I had another one, I'd let you guys have it. I don't think there's another one, because those are really hard to get your hands on. Oh, let's not fall this time. Use the cat walk. Use the cat walk. Yeah, yeah until I hit the wall. Oh, there's all kinds of drive caps on top. Oh. oh, these are Mac cross members, two piece cross members here for 34 inch frame. Let's go into the sleeper cab. That's got parts too. I'm looking at that one. <laughs> it's a red one too. You gotta get this. Do you see this in the video? Oh, yeah. Get up off my trap house. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got some stuff in it. This one got picked out pretty good. There's a lot in here. There's a lot of 250 buttons. Nope, not the tube I need. This is insane. It's the most insane. Tour I've had at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, oh, we it. haven't even finished up much. Well, there's the 34 600. We haven't even started. Oh, here's some Diller parts. Oh, these are those uh bearing uh for the Mac that are new. I push new bearings in them. Hendrickson spring hangers, Mac jigs. I forgot about all these freaking those are all the bushings. Yep. I've done those. If you're an OG subscriber, you'll remember. Brand new bell housing. This was a good clutch, $22.50. This is my little chair. <laughs> Back down plate. To my man. There's literally a whole motor back here. Yeah. These are my collection. Antique fire disposal. There was a rare Jeep tailgate in here. Oh, right here. Mint, mint Jeep tail, international tailgate for all of... Oh. Really cool. And I'm not an international guy, but right here, this is classic. Off a cute little scout. Someday when my kids restore one, I got it. So we did a little fan searching. Zach might be able to hook us up, but... Yeah, we got some nice, good, heavy housings over here. Love them, Mac. What'd that come out of? Oh, garbage truck. The guy owed me some money, so I took the cut off. Yep. Uh, they had a 502 gear ratio. It's tough doing this one-handed for you guys. But here we are. I didn't really, I guess I did know you had two Diller 10 wheeler three. bottles. There's three? Yeah. The other one's not here. Right here? So, I need this air cleaner if you don't want, if you want to get rid of it. Okay. Because that's uh, a rare commodity. Is, fan. This is it? has been converted. Yep. So I might have to go back to two belts and get the short set, short shaft. Yeah. And I'd also like this piece if you don't need it any longer. <laughs> There's some of these around here somewhere. If yeah. was. So do you want the VIN number off this to order parts from this? No, I'll, I got the other one. Yeah, I this is a great trick. Well. Clean, 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 clean. So that's a 300 two valve? Yeah. Hmm. Just a little bit. We got to do our winter cleanup in the shop still. But clean. That is so cool. Eight low low converted. Oh, remote grease. I was going to say, all the, all the trucks, every single truck have grease fittings here. And they have the grease fittings. Yep. 
A little bit of surface rust there, but no big deal. Yep. That is Off so on cool. the windshield to clean. <laughs> I love it. And it's a working truck. Yeah, on the front line all the time. This truck did 800 hours this year. Good truck. Oh, yeah. Insane. We walked through here earlier, but... Yeah. When you actually see everything, like, it's... A lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff to keep, a lot of pieces to keep the puzzle together. Yeah. Well, we are wrapped up here. Full tour. Appreciate Zach giving us a tour. But yeah. we're not actually done yet. Yeah, we got one last for the YouTube. We're, we're at the dog pound. Yep, the what dog are you guys playing, checkers? Actually, funny story. I built this uh, picnic table in tech class in 2007. It's held up very well. Yeah, I gotta tighten up the nails every once in a while, and every couple of years I pressure wash them. <laughs> but I don't want to get the wood soaked with water. It's very, it's very comfortable. I love it. Very so, when it's over here, right here, you do your thinking right here, and then you rip on the notebook. So then you're just like doing your notes, and then. Well, yeah, you got treats. Snacks. Of course, you're holding them down. Yeah, boss does that. We get some cool parts. <laughs> yeah. Keeps the rods on out. Yeah, you gotta smell good. I didn't say no to chicken wings. Who oh, said no cool to chicken wings? Air governor. You're the only one that said no. When the fuck we get ice cream? <laughs> we got some good dogs. Couple stuff. dogs. Anybody? You got any gold dogs? Yeah, gold means pure predator. Yeah. Those are hidden in my room. Oh. I got two of them. I got two. Uh, so yeah. any of you guys any have any diesel DPF exhaust emission system planer? Rizloni is like the cat's ass. He is like selling things today. Yeah, I just love cool. Okay, just a shout out. Nothing today was sold or a partner of the channel. Or Zach, sponsored. Or sponsored. But if no, any of the guys want to hit, hit, well, great product always. But if any of the guys want to hit up Zach for, like if Diller or Ian sees this, yeah, I'm extremely give it, brand loyal, if yeah. you guys couldn't tell. I am like, Rrr. Well. I'll have to show you some shitters. I've there. been told I've been brand loyal, too. Well, you're a John Deere guy. You're brainwashed. Yeah, I am no, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, he's not an ass with that. Yeah. <laughs> this is higher up. This is guy. Mac and Dillers. Yeah, Mac, Diller, John Deere. Caterpillar. Caterpillar. As long That's as it's a 15 liter or larger. I'm not into the C12s and stuff like that. Because the intake and exhaust for running a truck is on the same side. I'm worried about the heat cycles and exhaust manifolds breaking during corn. It's super stressful. Valid point. Yeah. Like Mac very, very sucks on the inside, other on the outside. And in Haiti, they don't fix exhaust manifold leaks. So you can get through corn silage. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to leave and then I realized, hey, I do need to get what, what I can't. What a right smash right in they're half price then, right? So I did buy some four and a quarter tires from Zach. That is why we are actually here. Keep coming. Keep coming. So we're gonna load those up. There you go. Is it right? Are you guys strong like maybe like baby ox? That's a 425. Hold on. Uh, well, we could do one hit. <laughs> do you guys need help or? Yeah. All right, hold on. I guess the camera can hold. Uh, uh, in Haiti, they do this no problem. <laughs> hold on. Let me move in. Your truck is gonna die after tonight. That's all right. Like the snowman over here. How do you not have any snow on him? Uh, 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 this is nothing. Oh, you hear the beat bell? Oh. <laughs> you hear the beat bell, sir? The, that's one of the best tires I've ever run. Still don't know how I have all the snow on it. Right. Okay. Jump on the other side. Ready? One. I'll wait for you guys to get it off the ground. Three. Holy. I think these are 16 ounces in the back. Are you doing lift? I'm not doing nothing. I'm not using them. Wow. Where can it go? Oh, 
We got some floater tires. Remind me to pay you for those. All right. <laughs> what is that thing underneath there? Oh, a uh, payload or something? Yeah. Uh, bell sphere. You think? We're gonna go. It's fine. Brad's buying half of them. Okay. If we lose it. Or three of them. Yeah, there's truck 20 on the left, truck 25, T800, SDP, 18 speed, 3 8 rail, 18,000 pound front, 16,000 pound spring, 52,000 pound new way. Fucking sweet oil field front bumper. We have a CTP 713 460 XT mirror tour, uh, 20,000 pound front, 16 spring, cool stacks. That truck just rips. And they all look like they fit the mold. Yeah, truck 20. This I love to drive truck 20. I'll drive that thing to California if I had to. Just um, a couple of se semis moving manure. Yep, here's their fuel station over here. 10,000 gallons, you said? Yep. Three ports. Three ports? Yep. One. And right here, over here. There's two up there. No yeah. way. I'd like to. And you were saying you go through quite a bit of fuel. Yeah, during corn silage, we're doing 16,000 gallons a week. <laughs> oh my god. So this is where it all began. As far as the diesel wall, right? Well, no, I had one before. I had a couple before this. I didn't realize you still had this. Yeah, I was on the chopping block to grow the company. And uh, it's still here, V and J precision machine engine, all kinds of cool, fun stuff. She's still here with us. Bigger. I I was in college and you were pulling this. Yeah. And that's how I knew who you were. Yeah, this thing is. She used to. I mean, it's not as beautiful as she used to be, but. She ran. She beat Brad. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time it got pulled? Alex pulled it this summer. Really? Yeah, I haven't pulled it in four years. Three, four years. Yeah, I, I love it. I still love it, but it just takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Last time it was on the road was like 10 years ago. So you got that. Yeah. Oh, this is uh, a Challenger car that I got quite a few years just, ago. Just a normal Challenger? Yeah, and there's some performance modifications. I don't know what it looks like out of here because I probably haven't washed it in a couple of years. Just a simple performance Challenger. Yeah, we ported the intake, ported the heads, ported the supercharger, leg them, whatever this word is. Uh, Clutch, injectors, ECM, drive shaft. Well, I guess we're gonna go get chicken wings, right? Yep, chicken wings. Oh, here's the snap on the shirt that I got four years ago. <laughs> What'd you think? Impressive. Thanks, Chris. Really, I really appreciate, appreciate the tour. Yep. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. This yeah. all started because Brad wanted to go buy tires with for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, and that auction, I had to know what the price is. Yeah, we had to talk to you. So, really appreciate Zach giving us a tour. We got to come out and actually see like stuff in action on the front line. Yeah, because the truck sitting in the shop, it's impressive. But when you see that much stuff moving around, yeah, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, like when we're frag tanking and stuff. Like, so we'll come back out. Mm -hmm. But appreciate you guys watching. We're gonna go eat some chicken wings. Isaiah's hungry. Brad. Bread's hunger. I haven't ate since the last time I ate. Well, there you have it. See you guys on the next one.